السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته يا أيها المسلمون to the long time listener and first time visitor we welcome you to this episode now without further ado let's get into it بسم الله الحمد لله حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه كما يحبه الله ويرضى وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أما بعد الحديث الحديث عن أبي هريرة رضي الله عنه قال بينما نحن جلوس عند النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذ جاءه رجل فقال يا رسول الله هلكت قال ما لك قال وقعت على امرأتي وأنا صائم This حديث بإذن الله تعالى is on the authority of Abu Hurairah رضي الله عنه He said while we were sitting with the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم that a man came to him he said oh messenger of Allah I've destroyed myself, I'm destroyed. He said, what is with you? قَالَ وَقَعْتُ عَلَىٰ إِمْرَأَتِي وَأَنَا صَائِمْ He said that I, and the literal meaning in Arabia, the literal meaning in Arabia would mean that I fell upon my wife وَأَنَا صَائِمْ while I am fasting. But the Arab and the Prophet wasallam. Firstly, in the Arab, they would ha- there are words that they have shyness in saying. So what they would do is give that which will indicate towards it, and one would understand the meaning. So this literal, this the meaning here is not the literal meaning. The meaning here is that I had relations with my wife, and I am saw him. Another narration that. It's in, during the month of Ramadan. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And with that, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you see from his adab, he didn't say, A'udhu billah, what is wrong with you? Get out of my sight. I can't stand to hear this. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, because he, he is the one who has the best of akhlaq, the best of mannerisms. The only thing, what he said to him, هَلْ تَجِرُ رَقَبَ تُعْتِقُهَا He went straight into the remedy. What is the remedy for this? He said, is there, do you have a slave in which you can free? Do you have a slave in which you can free? قَالَ لَا قَالَ هَلْ تَسْتَطِيعْ أَنْ تَسُومَ شَهْرَيْنِ مُتَتَابِعِينَ He asked him now, he didn't say, what is wrong? He didn't say, how can you not, so what are you going to do? No, he went on to the next remedy. The next remedy is, he said, do you have the ability to fast two months consecutively? قَالَ لَا قَالَ هَلْ قَالَ هَلْ تَجِدْ إِطْعَامْ سِتِّينَ مِسْكِينَ He said, do you have the ability to fast those consecutive two months? He said, no. He said, do you, are you able to feed, are you able to feed 60 wayfarers or 50, 60 uh, poor people? قَالَ لَا So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فَمَكَثْ مكث النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بين نحن على ذلك أوتي النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم بعرق فيها تمر بعرق فيها تمر والعرق المكتل. He said while the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم while he was waiting and he paused he didn't hurry and this is from the 
Uh, Sheikh al fawzan he said this is from the adab of the mufti, the one who's given the fatwa, that if there's a situation that is not clear to him, that he does not hasten towards giving an answer. He gives it some time, he ponder, and he sees if there is, if the answer or the situation comes to him, or the answer for the situation comes to him. So here, while the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was waiting, and he explained that while they were waiting, that uh, a container of a container was brought to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which had in it tamr, which had in it dates. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said, Aina Sail, Qala Anna. The man he replied by saying, Here I am. Qala Khudha Fatasadak bi. So he told him to take this vessel, take this container, and give sadaqah with it. فَقَالَ الرَّجُلُ عَلَىٰ أَفْقَرَ مِنِّي يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ So the man said to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, after the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam given him the, the hal, given him the, the way out of the situation, and that is because he said no to everything. And that is, someone came now with a container of dates. And this shows, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala, that it's permissible for one to aid someone in something in which he does not have the ability to do. A kafara, or it might be some kind of penalty or so forth like that. So it's per permissible to aid him in that. The man he replied, he said, For wallahi ma bayna la batayha yuridu al harratayn. Ahlu baytin afqaru min ahli bayti. He said, Oh, uh, he said, he said, Oh, mas uh, he said, Is there anyone who is poorer than me? The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave him the container of dates which was brought to him. He said, Is there anyone who is poorer than me? O Messenger of Allah. He said, by Allah, and he swore by Allah. And this is not something that is taken lightly. Some of us, some of us, we swear by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with all ease and we're lying. And as unfortunately, my, my time that I spent in Mosul in Egypt studying, that amongst the common people, and this is not everyone, but amongst the common people, if you ask the man to say, Wallahi, and he's lying, he has no problem saying, Wallahi. This is from my experience of being in Egypt. But if you ask the man to commit shirk and say, by the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he says, no, I can't do that. So if he says that, if you ask him to say, to commit shirk, he has, he has no problem lying and swearing by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if you ask him to swear by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if he says, one nabi, which you're not allowed to say, and it's shirk, if he says it, then he's telling the truth, unfortunately. If he, if he says, no, I'm not going to say it, then he's not going to say it and lie. But he will say, by Allah, and lie. So what he's meaning here, ma bayna la la bateha, meaning between, there's nothing between these mountains, nal Medina. There's no one between these mountains, nal Medina. And some of the scholars say, that al Harratain here is land in which there are high mountains of, on it with uh, black stone, meaning the color is black, not the actual black stone. He said there's no one, he's, he's emphasizing this to say that there's no one 
Between these two mountains, Nan Medina, that's poorer than me. فَضَحِكَ النَّبِي صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ حَتَّى بَدَأَتْ أَنْيَابُ So the Prophet صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ He dahika, he laughed. And the, the laughing of the Prophet صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ is not the laughing that we are accustomed to growing up in this land. The sunnah of the Prophet صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ in his laugh is that he would smile. And the extent of it, the utmost extent of it, is that he would, he would smile until his molar or anyab, his uh, teeth in front here, I don't know what it's called in English, would become uh, apparent. Not like the cackling, or not like the screaming and the hollering and so forth like that. We're doing our laughs. For that is not from the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Nevertheless, he said, "Thumma qala atimu ahlak." He said, "Take it and feed your family with it." So this shows the permissibility of one who has to do he has to do a kafara of uh, that which he, this man fell into, which. It has to be clear that this is haram to have relations with your wife during the month of Ramadan. During the daytime, sorry I should say, clarify. During the daytime of Ramadan, it is permissible after Al-Maghrib, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala, up until Al-Fajr. So this shows the permissibility here of the one... And this shows also that the one that does not have the ability, for instance, if no one came with anything to aid him in this kafara, it would be the same thing as our brother mentioned before me, as our brother Muhammad mentioned before me, Hafizahullah, that if he did not have the ability, it wouldn't be nothing upon him, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala. Hadha hadith azim. This is a tremendous hadith. Sheikh Fawzani said, this is a tremendous hadith, in it are fihi fawaid azima. In it there are tremendous benefits. And we're only going to mention a few of it because uh, I, want to, I want to mention uh, uh, an occurrence that occurred to me a few years ago, that happened to me a few years ago with someone coming to me. So in this, firstly, Shaykh al-Fawzan, hafizahullah ta'ala imam, he mentioned that as-suhaba yu'adhimu, as-suhaba yu'adhimuna al-mu'asi, meaning wal-mukhalafat, that they see sins and that which is mukhalafat, meaning that which is against the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they see it as something that is grave, it's tremendous. إِذَا وَقَعَ إِذَا وَقَعَ مِنْهُمْ If it occurs from them. لَا يَتَسَاهَلُونَ They do not take it as something that is easy. Oh, this is just small. And it has to be understood. This is having relations with your wife during the daytime of Ramadan is a tremendous sin. This is a sin which outside of Ramadan is not a sin. But because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us now during the month of Ramadan to refrain from food, drink, and relations with our wives, then it becomes haram during that time, the daytime of Ramadan. From the benefits of it, bi'ithnillahi ta'ala, al-mufti yastafsil. The Mufti, he seeks clarity from the one who is seeking the fatwa in his situation. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَمَا أَهْلَكَ وَمَا أَهْلَكَ وَمَا أَهْلَكَ وَفِي رِوَايَةَ أَصَابْتُ أَهْلِي 
wa ana sa'im and the prophet the, the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam agreed with this man and he he was seeking clarity in this and in another narration it's the same meaning that i had relations with my family while i was fasting another benefited from it bithnillah ta'ala adab ar-rajul ma qala jama'a jama'tu aw jama'a he did not say i had sex the adab the mannerism of the man he did not say i had sex fihi kiraha and in this phrase in itself there is some dislike fakanna an so now he gave a similitude of it so it could be understood abbar an bil ashya wal quran and you find the same similitude in the quran sometimes he said here there is some shyness as it regards mentioning of that and in this ya barakallahu fikum another uh, another benefit also is dalil ala anna al jama'a yubtil as sawm and in proof in the hadith in itself is that having relations during the daytime of Ramadan it corrupts the fast and nullifies the fast wa akarra ala dhalika an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he agreed with that because the man said i have destroyed myself or i am destroyed man jama'a ahlahu aw shariba faqad asa allah subhanahu wa ta'ala whoever has relations with his wife or he eats or he drinks then indeed indeed he has disobeyed allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa istahaq al-'uquba wa istahaq al-'uquba and he is deserving of punishment from it also ar-ruju' ila ahli al-'ilm 'inda al-mushkilat wa masail al-'ilm لا الى الاعوام او المتعالمين he said from it also is shown to that one has to return back to the people of knowledge when there are problems when there are different when there are issues of knowledge regarding knowledge you do not return back to the regular people the general people and you do not return back to those who are pretending that they that they are from the learned ones and in this also you see from the benefits of it al-mukhti ya'ti wa ya'tarif bi khata'i that the one who has who is in the wrong he comes and he admits that he is wrong he comes and he admits that he is wrong to the alim the one he seeking uh, a fatwa from not the way it occurs in these days in our times we have people going to the people of knowledge lying and getting and getting the the answer that they were seeking from another benefit bi idnillah ta'ala sakat an nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam hatta wajada hal that the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he remained quiet until he was able to find a, a remedy for the situation lam yatasarra he did not he was not hasty fihi dalilun ala as we mentioned before in it there is a dalil ala musaada man wajaba alayhi al kafara wa hum la yastati'un the one who the kafara is upon is okay to aid him the one who the kafara expiation of uh situation is upon it is permissible to aid him in that for those who does not have the ability to complete it bismillah ta'ala
بسم الله نبدا and from the benefits of this tremendous hadith this hadith of the man coming to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam seeking a resolution in that which he fell into of having relations with his wife during the time during the daytime of Ramadan from the benefit from a, a, a benefit from the hadith also rafaqa bihi an nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was gentle and kind with him he was gentle and kind with him even though the situation is tremendous tremendous situation for one to have relations with his wife during the daytime of Ramadan and in that also in that the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said khudha atim ahlak said take this vessel of dates and feed your family the adab of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in dhahik and laughing we mentioned that before and we mentioned also before that man ajaza an al kafara saqata anhu that whoever does not have the ability to carry out the kafara then the expiation then it is not up on him as, as the ulama they explain mubtilatu siyam mubtilatu siyam it is of two types yubtila siyam yujib al yujib al al qada wal kafara and then you have the other type yubtila siyam يوجب القضاء ولا كفار. The, the the example of those things which negates the fast is that which uh, negates the fast and is upon the person to make it up as well as do the expiation of the sin. And the example of that is having relations with your wife during the daytime of Ramadan. That one you have to make it up and you have to do the expiation. The second one is that which negates the fast and it's a must that the person make up make up that day. The example of akl wa sharb the example of eating and drinking bithnillah ta'ala. And in finishing, it's a must that one extends itself to at least have knowledge of his religion to the point where he's able to, he or she is able to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the correct way. For, in, for instance, I had an occurrence few years back where a couple came in the office and they wanted some advice they wanted some counseling so they presented to me that they have been their Ramadan has been a tumultuous Ramadan where they have not been gaining any benefit whatsoever from Ramadan they have been arguing and fighting, screaming and hollering, and just not conducting themselves in a way which is befitting for the Muslim to conduct itself, firstly, and secondly, during the month of Ramadan. They had a severe misunderstanding of the hadith. Malam Yada'a 
فليس لله حاجة أن يضع طعامه وشرابه أو العكس. Misunderstanding of the hadith that who ever does not leave off evil speech and evil actions, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no need for them to leave off their food and their drink. So they began to let me know that the Ramadan has been so terrible because of the fighting and arguing during the month of Ramadan, during the daytime, and it was a regular occurrence. Uh, many days of, out of Ramadan this occurred. So they went on to, t to ask my advice regarding, they told me that they, when it, after their argument and their fighting and their discord, they would automatically break their fast. They would automatically break their fast because they understand that there is no reward in this fast. They understand that there is no, that the fast has been nullified because of uh, evil speech and evil actions. So shaitan, we have to understand, yatadarraj bina. The shaitan, he takes us in stages. He doesn't just come and say, disbelieve in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He takes you in stage law by law. He may have you just miss a salat once a week, then it increase and increase. So in this instance here, shaitan took them from that understanding that there's no fast for them, so they, began, so they were eating and drinking because they understood that they, instead of it not be, being a reward for them or the reward is diminished, they understood that it, it's from the Mubtilatul Siyam. They understood that, that evil speech and evil actions were from those things that nullified the fast. So that took them from uh, eating and drinking to their understanding, well, if we're eating and drinking, we don't have any fast anyway. It took them to have in relations during the daytime of Ramadan. And they informed me that they did this many, many times during, during the month of Ramadan. So I began to explain to them that this is a, a tremendous, tremendous sin. That doesn't mean that because your reward is diminished that it's not upon you to uh, continue your fast. And sometimes, because of the subject, we look at this as something that is, that is light. We have to look at the remedy in which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave to this man in this hadith, in this tremendous hadith. Firstly, and it has to go in order also. It has to be in order. And the order is that you have a slave that you, you're able to free. The man said he didn't have that ability. Well, secondly, comes after that, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked him, did he have the ability to fast two consecutive months? And it has to be in the the Arabic language is very precise. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he didn't say, هَلْ تَسْتَطِيعَ أَنْ تَسُومَ أَنْ تَسُومَ شَهْرَيْنَ وَيَقِفْ He didn't say, did you have the ability to fast two months and stop? He said, شَهْرَيْنِ مُتَتَابِعَيْنَ شَهْرَيْنِ Two months consecutively, back to back. So in the explanation of that, and I'm going on to explain to this couple the tremendous... Uh, situation that they're in that now shahrani mutatabi'ini means that you have to fast two consecutive months this is for each time you fall into this sin this is not that you just say okay Ramadan wasn't good we were having relations uh, it's upon us to do 
two consecutive months. This is for each time that you fall into the sin. Shahraini mutatabi'in. And it has to be consecutive days and consecutive months. So if if you have to stop or you stop for any reason during those days, you have to start back over as the ulama explained. So now you're putting yourself in a tremendous danger because now shaitan, he comes in and he wiggles and he says, what kind of religion is this? This is the religion of haq. This is the religion in which, وَمَا آتَاكُمْ الرَّسُولُ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُوا The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gave the remedy in this instance, and that is, and I'm explaining to them that you have to fast uh, two consecutive months and you cannot break it up. If you break it up, you have to start over. If you don't have the ability for that now, you go on to Sitina Miskina. But Sitina Miskina, for every time you fall into that sin, Bidnillah Ta'ala. So it's a tremendous uh, reminder for us not to be lackadaisical and, and not to be playful regarding this instance and thinking that this is something that is a joke. This is a tremendous sin. This is a tremendous sin in the eyesight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to see Ramadan. And every time, every month during the Ramadan, I remind myself firstly, and then I remind those who are listening to me, bi'ibnillahi ta'ala, that some of us may not make Ramadan, some of us may not make the next Ramadan, and that there are those who were here last Ramadan who were with us, who are no longer with us. So we have to keep in mind that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving us this tremendous opportunity to make tawbah to Him, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to get close to Him and to remedy those things in which we fall, we fall short in throughout the, the year. And you see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has always given us an opportunity to fix something, whether it be from Ramadan to Ramadan or from Jumu'ah to Jumu'ah and so forth like that. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يتقبل منا الصيام that he accept from us الصيام وصلى الله على محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين وجزاكم الله خيرا